Welcome to the Watchman Channel. This channel is all about world news and Bible prophecy, pointing to the soon return of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I am asking that if you can, to please help to financially support this ministry. If you feel led to pledge any amount of money, it would be extremely helpful and greatly appreciated. There is a PayPal link in the description box and in my pinned comment below. You can also donate using Cash App. My cash tag is dollar sign watchman 1963 thank you all so much for your prayers and support god bless we now live in an isaiah 520 world where evil is good and good is evil where the sin of being a homosexual or transgender is openly celebrated and even glorified one of the many signs that we are living in the end times is the epidemic of homosexuality that is sweeping the world today Jesus said he would return at a time when society parallels the days of Lot, as we read in Luke 17, 28 through 30. Likewise, as it was also in the days of Lot, they ate, they drank, they bought, they sold, they planted, they built. But on the day that Lot went out of Sodom, it rained fire and brimstone from heaven and destroyed them all. Even so will it be in the day when the Son of Man is revealed. To find out what parallels our days with the days of Lot, we need to go back to the book of Genesis. Genesis 19, 1 through 5. Now the two angels came to Sodom in the evening, and Lot was sitting in the gate of Sodom. When Lot saw them, he rose to meet them, and he bowed himself with his face toward the ground, and said, My lords, please turn aside to your servant's house and spend the night and wash your feet. Then you may rise up early and go on your way. They said, No, we will spend the night in the town square. But he pressed them strongly, so they turned aside to him and entered his house. And he made them a feast and baked unleavened bread, and they ate. But before they lay down, the men of the city, the men of Sodom, both young and old, all the people to the last man, surrounded the house. And they called to Lot, Where are the men who came to you tonight? Bring them out to us, that we may know them. The term know them isn't a friendly handshake and how are you. It is to know them in a sexual way. What parallels our days with the days of Lot is homosexuality. No wonder the Pentagon hesitated to shoot down that Chinese spy balloon. It was probably too busy scheduling the next equity and gender training session for American service members. Seriously, folks, why are you surprised? Weakness is a consequence of a woke U.S. military. Here's one example. It's a shortened clip from a recent U.S. Army recruitment video. It reveals a lot about the U.S. military's shocking transformation. It begins in California with a little girl raised by two moms. I also marched for equality. I like to think I've been defending freedom from an early age. When I was six years old, one of my moms had an accident that left her paralyzed. But she tapped into my family's pride to get back on her feet, eventually standing at the altar to marry my other mom. And after meeting with an army recruiter, I found it, a way to prove my inner strength. I'm U.S. Army Corporal Emma Malone Lord and I answered my calling. Folks, is this the military's calling? Animated recruitment videos promoting lesbianism and same-sex marriage? In all fairness, this is only the most recent of many U.S. Army recruitment videos, but truly it appears the Pentagon is more concerned about advancing woke ideas, like what pronouns someone is using, rather than recruiting tough, masculine men to defend our nation. Now compare that recruitment clip to this one from China's People's Liberation Army. Remember, this is the same army that just sent that spy balloon unhindered over its sensitive U.S. military bases. Quite the contrast. No wonder U.S. recruitment hit its lowest level since the draft ended in 1973. It was down about 25% for the fiscal year 2022. Many in our culture want young men to become kinder, gentler, and more feminine. But that doesn't work for the military. Most 18 to 20 year old men would be more likely to sign up if the Army placed greater emphasis on training and equipping troops to overcome the nation's enemies rather than teaching them to embrace their preferred pronouns and transgenderism. Folks, it's time the Pentagon stopped this nonsense. From our nation's origins in 1789 until 1947, the Defense Department was called the War Department, and for good reason. Its main task is to defend this nation and win wars, 
period. Our founding fathers never intended our military leaders to be social engineers. So let's get back to advancing the idea of warriors wanted and army strong before it's too late. Just as in the days of Lot, not only is homosexuality widely accepted today, but it's being taught to our kids, just like in Sodom, as we read in verse 4. The men of the city, the men of Sodom, both young and old, all the people to the last man surrounded the house. Tonight we bring you a truly disturbing story out of Maine. A social worker at the Great Salt Bay Community School is accused of secretly trying to transition a 13-year-old girl, even giving her something called a chest binder, which is used to flatten breasts. Now, the counselor named Sam Roy reportedly told the girl that he wouldn't tell her parents and that she shouldn't either. Now, when the girl's mother then demanded answers, she says that the school defended the social worker and then claims the school had already started to referring to her daughter by a different name and then used different pronouns with her. She yanked her daughter from the school, but the counselor still works there. Isn't that lovely? Joining me now is that mother, Amber Levine. She's also the owner of Break of Day Mental Health Group. Also here with her is her attorney, Adam Shelton, from the Goldwater Institute. Amber, what does it say to us as a country that the school hasn't done anything to address this situation and keeps this social worker in place? What do people need to know about this case that I'm somehow missing? Oh, well, I think that it says that we as parents no longer um, are in charge of our kids. It's, it's scary, really. One example would be the quote unquote, don't say gay law in Florida. You know, studies show that one supportive adult, one supportive adult for an LGBTQI plus kid can make all the difference in terms of, of preventing suicide, in terms of, of them being able to navigate the world and to, to adulthood and leading a, a, you know, a happy, successful, productive life. One supportive adult. I'd love if that was always the parent, but it's not always a parent. Frequently, it's a teacher. Um, or a guidance counselor or some other or coach or another school personnel. This law forbids kids essentially from, uh, from talking to, to, to these people. And also it, it means that, the, that if you tell a teacher, the teacher has to tell the parent. And so it really is, it is a gag rule. It's a gag law um, to, to, help, uh, that, that, to prevent kids from accessing supportive adults. There are many people within the church who are teaching that homosexuality is not a sin, when scripture clearly says it is. This is another sign Jesus gave to look for prior to his second coming, as we read in Matthew 24, 11. Then many false prophets will rise up and deceive many. Homosexuality is strongly condemned in the Bible. Ezekiel 16, 49 through 50. Look, this was the iniquity of your sister Sodom. She and her daughter had pride, fullness of food, and an abundance of idleness. Neither did she strengthen the hand of the poor and needy, and they were haughty and committed abomination before me. Therefore I took them away as I saw fit. What was this prideful abomination committed before God? The answer is found in the book of Leviticus. Leviticus 18:22. You shall not lie with a male as with a woman. It is an abomination. Leviticus 20.13 If a man lies with a male as he lies with a woman, both of them have committed an abomination. They shall surely be put to death. Their blood shall be upon them. God gives mankind a dire warning for the acts of homosexuality in 2 Peter 2.6 And turning the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah into ashes, condemn them to destruction, making them an example to those who afterward would live ungodly. God also offers forgiveness to those who are living a life of homosexuality as we read in 1 Corinthians 6, 9 through 11. Or do you not know that the unrighteous will not inherit the kingdom of God? Do not be deceived. Neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor effeminate, nor homosexuals, nor thieves, nor the covetous, nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor swindlers will inherit the kingdom of God. And such were some of you, but you were washed, but you were sanctified, but you were justified in the name of the Lord Jesus and by the Spirit of our God. We were shocked, and probably most people were shocked, to learn that Vanderbilt Medical Center, which is a very well-respected hospital in Tennessee, is involved in the mutilation of children's genitals for profit. They brag about it on camera. Now, we know this because of Matt Walsh, who found the evidence. So yesterday, at a hearing in Tennessee, in the Statehouse, 
Democrats are outraged not by the general mutilation going on at Vanderbilt Medical Center, but they were mad at Matt Walsh. One Democrat, a man called John Ray Clemens, asked Walsh for his credentials. Here was Walsh's response. Can you give us a summary of your educational background or your health care education and experience? Mm, Mr. Walsh, you're recognized. My experience in health care? Your educational background. I'm just curious. You, 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 you yeah. testified as to a lot of your own research. So I'm curious for what purpose you do that and what background you have to qualify you to speak to that. Well, my Mr. background Walsh. that qualifies me to speak to this is that I'm a human being with a brain and common sense and I have a soul. And so therefore, I think it's a really bad idea to chemically castrate children. That is my experience. Um, also, I, I did, now it's true, I didn't, I didn't go to college, but I did go to school long enough to learn how to read so I can read the data for myself, and that's exactly what I've done. And for what purpose do you um, conduct your research and use this brain of yours? Mr. Walsh, you're recognized. I use it for the purpose of trying to protect children from being castrated and mutilated. That's one of the things I try to do. What kind of soulless freak is John Ray Clemens who could sit there hearing all this stuff and take the side of the castrators of children? It's, it's just beyond. But Matt Walsh is the villain. In another hearing, Walsh left another Tennessee lawmaker, this one called Caleb Hammer, completely speechless. Just curious your definition of, of if you feel like people are adults at 16 should... Well, uh, people are adults just... at 18, uh, but actually your, your brain is not fully developed until you're 25. So we should be having a conversation about whether we should even be doing these surgeries to people at 18. But certainly before 18, it's, it's absurd. I mean, do you, do, you, do you think that a 16-year-old can meaningfully consent to having their body parts removed? Do, do you? No? Oh, Caleb Hammer, another ghoul defending the indefensible, had no answer. Matt, thank you. It's so satisfying to watch. Boy, you expose these people as truly filthy people. Yeah, I think, well, they, I mean, they expose themselves to it, I think, I think most of all. And the interesting thing, too, is that I'm sitting there in the hearing. I was, I was uh, giving my uh, view on this bill. I'm in favor of the bill to ban uh, the mutilation of children. I'm giving my view as a taxpayer and a private citizen, not an author of the bill. So they're really failed and embarrassing attempts to, uh, to discredit me were not only humiliating for them, but also totally irrelevant. Because even if you can prove that I'm a terrible guy, does that automatically make it okay to mutilate children then? Because that's what we're supposed to be talking about. But they don't want to talk about that because they know they can't defend their position. This is a, the position that Democrats and the left are, are constantly in on, on many issues, in particular on this one, where their position is something that is so... It's so unspeakably evil that they can't speak it. So you can, you can defeat them in an argument simply by trying to, to, trying to get them to state their premise. They can't even state their premise. I mean, this, the, the Caleb Hemmer does believe that 16-year-olds uh, can consent to having body parts removed, but he can't say that out loud because he knows how crazy it sounds. And so instead, he just falls silent. You look at someone like John Ray Clemens, looks like sort of a normal person. Maybe he's, he has kids. He's in favor of cutting the breasts off girls? I mean, how could any? I mean, how could anybody get to a place where the, the, that's okay? I think uh, you know, I, I can't see inside their their minds, but I, I have to imagine that most of these people know at some level that it's wrong, but they're just ideologically beholden to it. And that, again, is why they don't even attempt to defend it. And instead, you know, instead we get this uh, credentialism thing going on, as if yeah. I need credentials to know that uh, abusing children is is wrong. God gives a dire warning to anyone who would cause a child to sin, as we read in Matthew eighteen six and seven. But whoever causes one of these little ones who believe in me to sin, it would be better for him if a millstone were hung around his neck and he were drowned in the depth of the sea. Woe to the world because of offenses. For offenses must come. But woe to that man by whom the offense comes. Folks, the reason we don't trust government is our leader's lack of concern for ethics, morality, and family values. A so-called family-friendly drag show at a Texas community center is just one example. No outrage or law violations were noted here, even though the drag queen strutted his stuff in a bodysuit and he told children in attendance to close their ears as he announced, cheers to the ones who lick us where we... Well, you get the idea. It's what people do to release bodily fluids. Community centers are usually required to abide by community standards. Shouldn't drag shows be limited to appropriate licensed venues like nightclubs or sexually oriented businesses? Do local officials think it's okay to violate ordinances and expose children to this? 
Maybe not this Texas drag show, but other similar shows have exposed children to breasts and genitalia. Is this what we want for our children? And in California, the state government has no problem with child prostitution. Legislators there passed a new law decriminalizing child prostitution. What the law does is keep child prostitutes out of jail and the judicial system where they could get help. Instead, they remain on the street to turn more tricks. It encourages and normalizes child sex trafficking. It keeps the cash flowing. Psalm 1, 1 through 6, tells us the way of the righteous in the end of the ungodly. Psalm 1, 1 through 6. Blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stands in the path of sinners, nor sits in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law he meditates day and night. He shall be like a tree, planted by the rivers of water, that brings forth its fruit in its season, whose leaf also shall not wither, and whatever he does shall prosper. The ungodly are not so, but are like the chaff, which the wind drives away. Therefore the ungodly shall not stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. For the Lord knows the way of the righteous, but the way of the ungodly shall perish. Daniel 12, 9 and 10. And he said, Go your way, Daniel, for the words are closed up and sealed to the time of the end. Many shall be purified, made white, and refined, but the wicked shall do wickedly, and none of the wicked shall understand, but the wise shall understand. Just as Daniel was told to shut up the words and seal the book until the time of the end, the Apostle John was told, Do not seal the words of the prophecy of this book for the time is at hand. Revelation 22, 10, and 11. And he said to me, Do not seal the words of the prophecy of this book, for the time is at hand. He who is unjust, let him be unjust still. He who is filthy, let him be filthy still. He who is righteous, let him be righteous still. He who is holy, let him be holy still. The signs of Jesus' soon return are so strong now, and the evidence is so clear, that any person willing to accept the truth can see that the end of the world as we know it is near. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. But God demonstrates his own love toward us, in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord, that if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. These are the ABCs of salvation. A. Admit that you're a sinner. B. Believe in your heart that Jesus Christ died for your sins, was buried, and God raised him from the dead. C. Call upon the name of the Lord, and you will be saved. Jesus paid the price for mankind's sin. He has provided a way to spend eternity with him and the Father. All you have to do is believe in the Lord Jesus and you will be saved. God has already done all the work. All you must do is receive, in faith, the salvation God offers. Fully trust in Jesus alone as the payment for your sins. Believe in him, and you will not perish. God is offering you salvation as a gift. All you have to do is accept it. Jesus is the only way of salvation. That being said, we must repent of our sins. While repentance is not a work that earns salvation, Repentance unto salvation does result in works. It is impossible to truly and fully change your mind without that causing a change in action. In the Bible, repentance results in a change in behavior. Repentance, properly defined, is necessary for salvation. Biblical repentance is changing your mind about Jesus Christ and turning to God in faith for salvation. Turning from sin is not the definition of repentance but it is one of the results of genuine faith-based repentance towards the Lord Jesus Christ. One day, Jesus is coming. You may be at church. You may be at work. You may be asleep. God grant that you will be ready when he makes his personal appearance. Occurs on a Sunday morning. My prophetic word to you this morning is get ready! Get ready!
Time is short. Call upon the name of Jesus today.